So the first setup of Y option wheel is we're just going to corner out the tight end and snap the ball as quickly as we possibly can. The tight end corner this year does a really good job of being able to attack man coverage. It gets in a nice soft spot. With this formation also, the alignment of the tight end helps us significantly in terms of its just capabilities of being able to beat man coverage to the sideline. And so they basically have to choose where they want to run with their user. Now, another thing you have here is if they are playing you in a cover one or cover zero and they're pressing you, go ahead and look to throw this fade over the top. If they're pressing you, that fade is oftentimes gonna be there for you over the top of the defender. Now, the other thing that's really nice about this specific setup here is it's gonna then naturally kind of leave the middle of the field open because they're gonna have to go help on the tight end. They're gonna have to have help for the deep, uh, deep fade route. And so this post right on the back side here, you're going to see cuts inside, beats man coverage easily. And you can see how this setup is such a good setup. It's a quick snap setup. You don't have to do a lot of adjustments to set this up, and you're able to get out quick and go. You also have the running back wheel that absolutely torches man coverage over the top. So this, this play just really does a great job of attacking man coverage. This play also does a really good job of attacking zone coverage, specifically cover four and cover three. If they're in cover four coverage, the main thing you want to look for here is your tight end. As you can see, just kind of gets a nice clear out for him and he's able to attack the coverage. So from a user perspective, they have to make a decision. If they choose to go guard the tight end with their user, then what you're going to be able to do, it's going to open the middle of the field up. You're going to throw that right in that little window right there. As you can see, it's a very simple two-man read, but it is very effective. Uh, cover three, same basic principle here. Uh, if, the, if, they, if they sit in the middle of the field to take the post, then you're going to throw the corner. Now, um, what you saw right there is kind of important, especially if we have a taller defender and if they're using curl flats. If they're using stock curl flats, um, the stock curl flat can kind of debate this corner for a little while. Uh, but as you can see, I can pass lead it up into the outside, and oftentimes he's going to be wide open. So that's normally not, uh, it's normally not a big issue. Most people aren't going to play that kind of cover three. But if they do, as you can see here, He's going to get open to the sideline. And then if they are playing hard flats, it's going to be even more open than that. But again, same basic principle here. If they say, okay, well, we're playing cover three, but we're going to take our user and we're going to go help on the tight end, that moves him out of the middle of the field. And we can then throw this kind of in these, uh, in all of these different windows there. Bo Jackson kind of went kind of crazy. Let me show you this uh, one more time. Again, they're going to user that route. And what you'll see here, you can throw this in between the yellows and underneath the deep blues, which is why it's such a good route, such a powerful route in this in this offense. Another thing that's really popular, a lot of people like to do um, out of out of man to man, is they might do a coverage defense that looks something like this with their user in the middle of the field. It still is going to mean the same basic things for you. Um, if he stays in the middle of the field, you're wanting to look to the tight end. If the tight end doesn't beat the main coverage, obviously you got to check it down to your uh, post route if he's available to you. So just keep that in mind. But this is the first setup of Wap Will, one of my favorites. And the only real weakness of this setup, in my opinion, is a cover two coverage. Now, the thing about the cover two coverage, though, is you will be able to check it down to this flat late in the play and just check it down and get you a couple yards against that defense. But by and large, if they're playing a true cover two defense, then they will be able to take away the tight end post with a, with a cloud flat defender. So you're going to have to either A, throw it in that little pocket right there, or just check it down. I don't know why the flat bounced. I think I've had a weird pass lead. Another thing that you can do, though, if they're let's say they're trying to take away the flat. This is kind of important, though. I did want to mention this. A lot of people like to run double Mabel. Okay, so if they're running double Mabel on you, it's going to mean this guy's going to be in a flat, right? So because he's going to be in a flat, this tight end corner is going to get open in this pocket. This is why set feet lead's important. You want to throw it right in that little window, possession catch it, and that can be a really nice read for you as well. So just keep that in mind. Um, but this play all in all is going to be able to beat a variety of different coverages. And please don't ignore the fact that you have this deep uh, like fade over the top against that coverage. For the second setup of Y option wheel, it's a little bit more of a um, man beating variation of the play and really one that I love. We're just going to drag the tight end. We're going to streak the slot receiver in route the outside uh, trips receiver. 
and then we're going to slide right and block our running back. This is going to pick up really any blitz that they have, and it's going to give us a nice routes against man-to-man. The first read is always the tight end, and the tight end is almost always open on this route combo. And that route right there, if you can get it to do that, it's really hard to stop this offense, okay? So that's a really nice little route. It's your first read against man coverage. And so if you think about it, what are they going to have to do with their defense? Well, you know, they're probably going to have to cut and come underneath and basically defend this tight end drag. They still have to have this guy over the top because of what we just showed you out of why option will. So typically you're going to have a defense that looks like this. Sometimes it might look like this, but the bottom line is this is kind of what the defense is going to look like for most people when they're trying to defend this formation. So because of these adjustments, if you look to that outside trips receiver, you can kind of throw that in possession, catch that down, and uh, be able to beat the man coverage that way. Now, if they do cut the crosser, if they truly cut the crosser with their drag route, um, that's kind of what you want them to do. Because what you'll see here is if they cut the crosser, even if they have this cross man, and even if they have that cloud flat on the outside, which is pretty good adjustments for this formation, what you're going to notice here is the uh, post route, to the solo receiver, you can throw it before he gets to the cloud flat and basically just possession catch it, and you're going to be in business with that route combination. This is also very simple and very effective against uh, zone, and essentially we're just creating high lows in the middle of the field, which is one of the best ways to pass. Uh, first read here, if they don't have a hard flat, you're going to throw that every single time. That is going to force them to have to hard flat. They can't curl flat. What a lot of people like to do is they like to curl flat because the curl flat will match a running back wheel route. The problem with that is it's not going to cover this tight end drag, as you can see here. Kind of covered it a little bit better than I thought he would, but typically it's not going to cover that tight end drag. If I go to just a basic cover three and uh, get rid of this three wreck, you'll see a little bit more what I'm talking about in terms of how this space is out right there. And then if you wait on this post, you can throw it kind of in that little window. Uh, and I'll show that one more time. So if they, if they are, you know, playing good underneath coverage and they're able to take away your, both your underneath routes, then you're going to look to throw this post and you want to throw it kind of right over the top of that yellow, as you can see right there, right in a little soft spot against that coverage. So super, super simple little setup here, but really, really effective in my opinion. And uh, this is just one of those plays. It's super hard to guard. I really like this play also if they are running a lot of cover two, because if they're running a lot of cover two, it means they have a lot of yellow zones and this is going to high low them in the middle. So you'll see right here, just check down to the in route, possession, catch it, super clean, super easy. And then if they, you know, sit underneath with their user, then that is going to then leave them vulnerable over the top. So what you'll see here, they sit in, they sit kind of underneath with their user and you get that wide open in behind it. So super effective little setup here out of Y option will. The next play we're going to be going over is tight end whip. And the first setup we're going to do is we're going to drag our outside uh, trips, or I'm sorry, we're going to drag our slot receiver. We're going to streak our um, outside trips receiver, and then we're going to wheel our running back. So you can see this is what the play art looks like. And this is really good against man coverage as well. Again, you have the threat of this running back wheel. If they're playing you in man-to-man, -man, they have to have safety help over the top. It's what makes this formation, in my opinion, very difficult to defend because that running back wheel will consistently attack man coverage over the top of the defense. So they have to have something over there to help with that. Again, we talked about in the previous video that if they don't have uh, safety help over here on the right, then and they're playing you in press man, that fade or that streak will be a pretty good option against that coverage as well. So those are a couple of things to do that are going to funnel them into certain adjustments. One of those being probably something like this right here where they have to have safety help. Now that safety help could come in a couple different ways. One of the ways it can come would be like this. So if you see over here to the left side um, or to the right side. So what that does is when they have to have safety help, they can't play these underneath routes. So your little whip route underneath, super good against man coverage. Your drag route is also very good this year uh, at, at attacking man-to-man -man coverage. The, the post route as well is going to be another route. So you see right here this little drag underneath. See how that three wreck is able to defend for the most part, but he still gets open, and that three wreck has to become a deep half if they're playing, you know, if they're if they're not respecting your streak. So they have to have, you know, some help on the outsides if they're going to play this defense. 
And then the other thing that you have within all this is if they use her the tight end whip route, which a lot of people like to, then again, we have that kind of same little chess match in the middle where we're throwing that post route right over the middle. Very nice little man beating route. So this route, does this play art uh, does a really good job of attacking main coverage. It also does a really good job of attacking zone because you have this running back will. I want to go over this with the cover three. So as I said before, a cover when you're playing cover three this year, uh, what will basically happen is the curl flats will match the running back. It doesn't matter if it's zone dropped or not. So you'll see here the curl flats will match that wheel, and then I can throw this little drag underneath, and now we really can take advantage of their ability to play double Mabel coverage because what most people like to do when they're playing double Mabel coverage is they're going to have a defense that's going to look something like what you see here on your screen, and then they're usering in the middle of the field. Well, we have a lot of openings on this on this uh, coverage concept because the curl flat has to match that wheel, and then R1, as you saw, as I'm getting crazy screamed at by SN1, um, R1 is wide open underneath, so it really allows you to be able to space the field very, very well. This is probably the best spacing that you're going to get in this formation, in my opinion. Now let's say they go more of like traditional cover four style with hard flats. If they go cover four style with hard flats, then they've got to worry about that route over the top of them um, where their user, it's kind of a tight decision, but essentially what we're funneling them into in terms of how they're going to have to play us defensively is their user is going to have to make a decision. And the decision is essentially, are you going to cover the drag or are you going to cover the post? So like if you look at the, how this cover four is basically organized here, if he leaves the middle of the field, it leaves the entire middle of the field open. So let's say he drifts back to go guard the post because we have this running back wheel, even though it is a, um, even though it is a hard flat, so to speak, this is still open underneath, right? Because the hard flat is going more to the sideline and we'll throw this more uh, in the area of the numbers. So they have to leave themselves basically in the middle of the field. Otherwise the drag is wide open. Well, if they leave themselves in the middle of the field, then what you have to worry about here is this post route coming right in this little pocket against that defense. So really, really like this setup against man zone, really anything that they want to do. I think it's one of the better setups in the game. Now, this setup is also really effective if you're playing somebody that wants to run uh, cover two coverage. Why is it really good against cover two coverage? Because this wheel route will pull this defender out of the middle of the field. This is going to become a nice little check down for you. Just get some basic yardage. We are going to be able to manipulate cover two pretty hot, pretty easily here in a minute. But this just kind of keeps the chains moving and allows us to, you know, be able to also have a really good play that's going to do a great job at attacking man and zone coverage, right? So that is the first setup of Titan Whip. Now, the next setup of Titan Whip is a little bit more of a, a spacing concept, really good for cover four. Um, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to flat our slot receiver. We're going to streak our outside trips receiver, and we're going to wheel our running back, and we're going to motion this guy across. So the beauty of this is this is just going to create nice spacing, for us to be able to attack both man and zone and really what they're going to be end up doing uh, to defend most of what we're able to do offensively is honestly probably get into some type of base press cover four, um, at, at least on the left side. And this little concept right here will do a really good job of attacking that defense. So what you have here is this flat will pull out the hard flat. You can throw this right in that little pocket. You just want a possession, catch that every single time. And so now the user is now going to have to make even more of a decision. And ultimately what we're going to get them to do with their user is they're going to have to go guard the running back, right? They don't want to man up the running back because manning up the running back is basically pointless when you're in U trips because the wheel route will beat man coverage over the top. So they're going to have to go user that, which moves them out of the middle of the field again. And we're able to throw this over the top of the defender, as you can see right there. So this just becomes a really nice little cat and mouse game. But you also still like, let's say you guess wrong and it's man coverage. You still have your tight end whip route. You still have your running back wheel route against man coverage um, that will still be able to manipulate man coverage at a pretty high clip. And then you also still have that post route. So I think this play uh, is a nice little motion setup that does a really good job of just attacking. Now, if you wanted to, another thing that you could do is you could put the running back on a streak. You'll see with the spacing, that gets him a little bit more into the seam area of the field. 
you can certainly do that. I wouldn't advise that if it's man coverage, though. But if it's zone coverage, what typically will happen is there won't be a press on the slot receiver. So because there are the solo receiver, so because there's no press on him, you'll see he'll get across the field a little quicker. And then this gets really into the seam area of the field. But as you can see, I don't think it's the best um, because the yellow zone is able to cover it. But if you use the wheel route, really not able to cover it that well. So um, anyways, this little setup right here, I think super, super effective. And you just have a lot of really good routes and they have to go user that defender. And if they don't, then, or if they do go user him, this route is going to be wide open over here on the right. So for the next setup of tight end whip, I think this is a really good setup for just attacking the left side of the screen out of a three strong to the right alignment, which we don't really do a lot in this formation. But U-Trips is really uniquely aligned to allow you to do that. So uh, all we're going to do here is we're just going to flat our outside trips receiver. We're going to put our tight end on the tight end apprentice crosser, and we're going to streak the solo wide receiver. Now, you have the choice. It's up to you if you want to leave the running back on his route, if you want to put him on a table, if you want to put him on an out route, whatever you want to do with running back, you can block him perfectly fine right um, but the main thing here that we're looking for is we're looking for this tight end crosser you see right here it's going to do a really good job of course i threw that just a second too late um, the tight end crosser is going to do a really good job of attacking man coverage so what you'll see we'll show it to you again we'll actually complete it this time let's see it cuts to the left and it gets bumped fantastic fantastic um, the tight end crosser will normally do a really good job of beating man coverage hopefully he will eventually on this clip here so you see there, he beats man, okay? So the tight end route beats man coverage. The other thing that we have to also talk through a little bit with this setup is you have a really nice man beating route backside with this post. So this is the main reason we're doing it out of this play because you have this backside post. If you don't have a uh, tight end apprentice, you can do the same exact route combo out of stutter curl seam. You just won't have that post route. So it would look like this. As you can see, this is the play stutter curl seam. And then now it's the same exact thing. It's just you don't have a backside post, okay? So is what it is. But anyway, the point of this is to create a cross concept from right to left, which will attack all of that. And as you can see, this post route just cooks man. Um, so if they're running to run a lot of man to man on you, which a lot of people like to run man against U trips, which I don't understand quite why, because the formation just has really good man beating routes, um, you're going to have the ability to, to beat that. Now, Another pop, a very popular adjustment for U trips, and really one that I like, is to take this guy cross man him on the on the outside trips receiver, and then curl flat this defender right here. Um, I think this play does a decent job of attacking that because you'll see this sharp cutting post possession catch that against man coverage. It's going to beat man coverage really, really well. So um, that sharp cutting post is super important in terms of our capabilities to be able to beat man coverage. And a lot of times what we'll get is we'll get a defense looks kind of like this, right? Something like this. And then on the left side, this guy might be in a purple um, a lot of times. And then this is probably going to be the user, right? So what you'll see in how this play uh, interacts with that coverage adjustment is you have the running back to the flat. And then you can also throw this kind of late in the middle of the field, as you can see right there, against that coverage. So tight and whip, super good against man. Uh, this play is also really good against zone, uh, especially baseline press cover four, because this is a short post route. Um, it's going to be really good at getting underneath a lot of zones. So what you'll see right here is if they don't have that yellow there, I can throw that. Now they do. Of course, they do have the yellow there, so I understand. But um, we'll, we'll cover that here in a minute. But if, they, if they're playing like a like a double Mabel coverage, right, where they're doing this. And then this guy might be man up on the tight end or something. Basically, I'm just saying they don't have the, they don't have a yellow on the left. If they don't have a yellow on the left, this post, when he cuts inside, just pass it down inside, possession catch it, really good route, really, really good route for attacking that. Now, if they are just playing your standard, you know, base press cover four, then what you're wanting to look for here is your tight end crosser. So you'll see here, just pass lead that down and outside, super open. And so they have to go user defend that. So because they have to go user defend that, and this is kind of the cat and mouse game this formation allows us to get to, they have to run out of the middle of the field to go user that. Well, the spacing of U-trips is really nice because it allows us to then hit this backside post once he kind of crosses the yellow, right in that little window right there. Super nice route for attacking that. And you could do that against cover three, cover four, um, really all of those. So I really like this route combo just to kind of 
uh, it's like a change of pace concept. Does a really good job against man coverage, and then it also does a really good job at just kind of spacing and really allowing us uh, formationally to attack a little bit more uh, to the left hand side of the formation, where most of our plays so far have kind of been more right side centered uh, attacks. The next play we're going to be going over is a play curl flat out of the U-Trips formation. Really good play. And the first setup is going to be designed to really attack, again, the left-hand side of the screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag our tight end. We're going to in route our outside uh, trips receiver. And we're going to block our running back and streak our solo receiver. And then we're going to motion the slot across. When we snap this ball, we just want to make sure we snap it about right in here. And what you'll see is if it's cover four or cover three, this corner route is going to be open to the left-hand side of the screen. So in a previous setup, we were using this guy as kind of almost like a decoy route. And now he's kind of the featured uh, receiving threat. Now let's say they run man coverage. I don't love this play against man, but this corner route does do a nice job of being able to get some separation against man coverage when he cuts to the sideline. So please keep that in mind. Now, if they are running a traditional uh, cover three with actual curl flat zones, well, if you take a look here, you'll see the curl flat gets pretty good depth against that. And then late, it's going to come off the route. So as you saw right there, it was like guarding it, guarding it, guarding it. And then late, it comes off of the route. So what we want to do to attack that is we just want to be patient in the pocket. And um, of course, I totally messed that up. Also, when in doubt, just check down to your backside in route or your backside drag. Okay, you always want to be looking for those routes because those routes are what we call bailout routes. They are just simple check downs that allow you to, if you guess wrong or you mess up, you can have something on the back end. But again here, if we just wait on this, you see that it can clear the curl flat. And uh, now they get we get them in a situation where they, again, have to go back to cover two. So we're kind of forcing them to play cover two on both sides of the field. The problem with the cover two is they don't have oftentimes hard flats so you can hit you know your little backside check downs i should have thrown the tight end there but your tight end should be open in a situation where they run a cover two coverage your tight end should be the route that you're looking for um and then that's going to require them to mabel which will then open up some other stuff so you see here yellow and cloud back up we'll throw, throw the tight end underneath super super simple um of a route combination okay now, for the next version of this route combination, it's going to do a really good job of attacking uh, cover four, cover three again. And um, this, this one is going to do a really good job of attacking your cover twos. So what we're going to do is we're going to streak our solo uh, wide receiver. We're going to uh, slant our outside trips receiver, and then we're just going to motion him across the formation and snap when he passes the tackle. So what you'll see here is this is kind of your patented slant post combo. And this post gets over the top of 30 yard clouds. This post is super effective. And this post just does a really good job of, against cover two. So let me try to show that a little bit better here. But basically, if they're in double Mabel cover two, this is a great little play to go to because it just kind of attacks everything that the double Mabel can do. And you'll see right here, see how I can throw that against cover two? Um, a little bit better, hopefully. Let me show it to you one more time. And let's get the cloud flats. We'll go ahead and back these guys up too. And it doesn't have to be a slant. If you want to use a drag, you can. I like the slant just because it spaces a little better. Um, slants do still stop in the middle of the field, unfortunately. Um, but you 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 have that, right? So uh, anyway, so anyway, that's there. Uh, I'm not going to belabor the point too much, but just understand you have this deep crosser. Um, you know, which up till this point really haven't thrown a whole lot of that. And you'll see here again, possession catch that because of KOs and you're going to be in business. So you have a nice little play there uh, that can really attack the coverage out of curl flat. And it is a, tr it's a fairly, fairly simple play, but it is fairly effective. Now let's say you have backfield apprentice. Okay. If you have backfield apprentice, you can do this from the same look as your three by one. So all we're going to do now is we're just going to streak our solo receiver and we're going to Texas our running back. This is going to create the same concept as the slant post. And honestly, it'll be a little bit better because the running back route won't stop running. Um, I got to freeform that. You got to freeform everything this year. Um, the running back route won't stop running over the middle of the field. So, you know, you could do this. And then what you'll see is between it's basically between your 
What a fantastic shed by a Sin 3. Um, basically, it's a read between your running back and your slot. Okay, Your flat is there to pull zones out of the middle. And you see this post yard also does a really good job against man coverage. So it's just a good route in general. Um, they have to be putting these guys on the outside in halves, and then they're going to use her the, the post most of the time. So it's going to leave this running back kind of open in this little pocket right here, as you see, and you're able to attack man coverage with that other setup out of curl flat. The next play we're going to be going over is a little bit of a shot play, as I've kind of talked a little, a little bit about before. It's Pat's slot out, but we've been kind of funneling them into running a lot of cover two, and it's so that we can run play like what we're going to show you right here. So all we're going to do is we're just going to streak our slot receiver and motion him to the left side. The running back can be on anything. If you want to block him for extra protection, feel free to do so. Against cover two, this R1 is going to get open over the top of the cloud, and that slot route is going to clear out the deep half zone. Now, there is a window here, and it's kind of a, a tight window. You can kind of throw this slot. Um, or I'm sorry, let's show you. let me show you that a little bit of a different way. So you, let's say you wanted to try to throw the slot, okay? Um, we're going to put this guy on a drag instead of a fade, and then this is going to give us a check down option. And what you're going to see here is that on the left side, a lot of times what can happen is this tight end post can actually pull the half, and you can actually throw this over the top of that deep half defender. Now, what a lot of people do is they run deep out zone KO on their outside corners, and they run deep end zone KO on their safeties. If they do that, then this becomes an open receiving threat. Um, and you can freeform and high point it to get it out a little bit more. But it's just something that I wanted to like kind of make you aware of that you have in your arsenal uh, from this playbook. A lot of people don't know that. Um, you know, and again, if they're in more of a standard alignment here, you'll see once he turns, see how he turns his hips inside? I'm going to throw it outside and give my receiver a, a chance to get it over the shoulder. Um, as you can see, we're not getting a ton of success with this, um, but I'm, I'm just telling you, you can have a lot of success with this combo. And um, if, you, if all else fails, then you're just going to check down to your little post or your little drag underneath or just take a sack. This is 100% a shot play. What is good about the original setup is it will also beat cover three, cover four. So you'll see here, like let's say they run cover three or cover four. I'm just trying to snap it right before he sets his feet. You see we clear out the zone. Pacheco plays out of his mind. But basically, and, and if you were going to run this version of it, you'd probably want to do this right here. Um, so you see here, you know, nice little uh, kind of flood. And then... Pass lead that to the right. Pacheco's playing out of his mind. I gotta wait a little bit longer on that. If Pacheco climbs that much to the route, then you just throw the tight end drag. Okay. Um, don't overcomplicate it. Here we'll show you what I'm talking about. But you'll see if you just wait on this, pass lead that to the right. And you see I can just throw it basically where the zones are not, right? Uh, same thing is true of cover three. It's a little bit more true of cover three. I think cover four defends it a little better, but cover three doesn't. Let me see. You see here's cover three. Boom. Easy read. So really nice little play uh, that can just take advantage of different types of zones that they might have. Um, and now let's go ahead and talk about tight end deep out as kind of a, um, a cover two bomb. Really anything with a, a fade on the outside is really what you're looking for. Uh, when bombing cover two, so like Pat's X curl would be a good play. Uh, deep slot curl would be a good play. Um, halfback slug go would be a good play. But we're going to show it out of tight and deep out because, again, we got to make sure that they can't just run cover two on us all game. So all you're going to do is you're going to streak your tight end. And then you – I like to block my running back out of this. You don't have to, but I like to. And against cover two, what will happen is, as you'll see right here, you can kind of throw this to the right. Now, um, they are getting that press that is rerouting the route, which we'll cover uh, how to address that here in just a second. But sometimes you can still sneak this in over the top. Let me see if I can get a better example. Yeah, not quite, not quite happening for me. Okay. Um, if they are rerouting you on the outside, that's where I like to use a fade. So you'll see here because the fade will release to the outside, so then you get this nice 
kind of pocket over the top of the defender that you can hit against that cover three coverage. So that's one option that you have as well as use the fade. You could do it out of like Y option will, um, for example. But this is really good if they are uh, basically doing the backed off, like the, the double Mabel coverage on you. If they're doing that on you with this, this is really good because this fade, I forgot to put the Titan on a streak, but the fade doesn't get pressed and he kind of wheels himself out to the outside. So what you'll see again, let me try to show it. Let me go with true double Mabel coverage. All right. So true double Mabel coverage, streak the tight end, watch the circle receiver. So number one, you have your tight end there. I threw that ball into the next practice mode. Wow. Uh, but you have your tight end or your slot. So the thing about the tight end, you'll see right here, is you can actually throw this up and over the top of a standard cover two as well. So you have the tight end. They're going to have to deep half. What a lot of people like to do is roll. So um, you're going to get a lot of this right here. Maybe if I can get my adjustments to register. All right. So something like that. So if you get that, um, then that's where I like to use the fade route. And what you'll see is the fade gets over the top. And then that half is going to hold him for just a second and you can kind of sneak that in there but one of the other things that a lot of people like to do against this and we'll show it out of uh, pa fork now or i'm sorry not pa fork uh, patch y out what another thing a lot of people like to do is they like to cross man uh this is what i like to do so if i was playing this i would cross man this guy here i would then have this guy kind of basically this defense because there's not the the weakness of u trips is there's not a deep corner route that can really get over a press cloud. Um, it's, it's really not a, a great route to do that. So um, this play uh, can do a really good job. So what we're going to do is we're going to smart route the solo wide receiver. And then it's up to you. If you wanted to, you could streak your tight end or you could drag your tight end and corner route. And then I would wheel the running back. But what you'll see with this is when they do that cross man, when they do that cross man, the wheel route will clear the cloud. So uh, basically, let me show that one more time. So let's say you get a like something like this, right? Watch the wheel route. You'll see right here, he's going to cut up field. The cloud doesn't typically match him. And you see this is a touchdown. So it's a way that you it's a it's kind of a gotcha play. It's one of those plays where it's like, okay, I know what they're doing adjustment wise. I'm gonna go to this, I'm gonna go to this because it's it's a way to attack that specific adjustment that they're running to get them out of it so that then it opens up other things. Another thing that a lot of people like to do um, against a formation like this is they love to cross man it. Um, any kind of spread formation, people like to cross man, so it might be man up, man up. And then uh, man up here with some underneath zones. Okay. Pretty good coverage uh, set of coverage adjustments, but there's no middle of the field defender. So this post route, what you'll see here, a lot of times he can beat man to the middle. And they if they don't have a safety, and that's just because I have universal coverage activated, but if they don't have a safety to help there, that could be a touchdown as well. So it's just something that you want to at least look at. Um, you know, I, I really like the wheel routes this year aren't as good as they were last year, but they are still really effective. Okay. Um, so if they're using that press cloud flat trick, this is just a little trick that I like to go to that will kind of get them out of that. You can um, streak the tight end and then just drag this guy backside. Um, this is also another good option. This is a little better for like a true... Uh, like if they're running like a true double Mabel coverage, uh, let me show that. So if they're running like a true double Mabel coverage, this wheel route, as you see, will get over the top of that as well. So that's how you can kind of use the wheel route situationally uh, to attack some of the things that you need to be able to attack. So the next play that we're going to be going over is the play scat. And this is really, really effective for um, just kind of, again, basic coverages and when they're starting to key in on your tight end. So all we're going to do is we're going to streak our outside uh, trips receiver. We're going to slot apprentice post our solo wide receiver. If you don't have slot apprentice, 
then just put him on a curl or something. It doesn't matter. Just something simple. Uh, and then with the running back, I like to either block him or just leave him on this wheel. Okay. So you're going to motion the slot receiver in one step and you're going to snap the ball. And the reason for the motion is because it's going to help this get nice separation against uh, man to man. And it's also going to do us a little bit of a favor against like cover three, because what uh, cover three is going to try to do is it's going to try to reroute this route. So you see here now the cover three coverage can't do that. And if we wait on this, you'll see, I don't know why the tight end never released to the flat, but basically the tight end would normally release to the flat and then we would throw the tight end. So let me show that again. So if I run it just like this, he can kind of get over the top of the, the purple, but anyway. So this is just another way to flood the right side of the screen. Um, this is a way that we're able to just do it with the slot receiver, which they haven't really seen that a lot. And I think this little backside scat curl is not terrible either if you wanted to leave that on the field. But this is also going to do a really good job against any kind of hard flat. If Because if you think about it, they're going to have to hard flat to stop your whip routes and stuff. So once they start to do that, this route combo becomes a lot better. For some reason, the tight end is actually taking full responsibility for blocking a three-man rush. So we're going to put him on a flat. <laughs> I don't know why he's doing that because uh, he normally just releases – if they don't blitz, but anyway, so like what I was talking about with the cover three, so you see how the tight end releases, they now have to respect the tight end. That means that this is going to be more vulnerable. So it kind of gives more time uh, for the corner route to be able to actually get some separation. If you wanted to, you could leave him on this route. If you know, it's not man, if you know, he's not manned up, uh, feel free to leave him on his route and uh, just let him run his, his corner route. But be aware that it's going to be a little shallower and be aware that reroutes, like if I was in cover three, um, it would typically reroute him. And some he actually missed the press, which made it better. That's why you need tall defenders underneath because they just jump up for stuff. Um, but basically, you know, just, yeah, this is just essentially flooding the right side. But now we're using the slot receiver um, instead of the tight end. And uh, it can be a pretty nice little play for you. For the next setup of scat, uh, kind of a unique little play that I like to run. And the main purpose of this play is to uh, kind of give them a little bit of an inverse to another combo that we were using. So um, typically the solo has been the guy that's going to be on the post route every single time, right? So now we're going to do it with this receiver. So what I like to do with this play is we're going to streak our solo wide receiver. We're going to drag our tight end. We're going to in route our outside trips receiver, and then we're going to block our running back. So it's going to look like this. And then when this guy comes across, you're just going to snap it about right in here. And what you'll see is that little post um, typically actually ran very poorly there, uh, but typically will beat man coverage across just like it beat it on the corner route. We'll show it to you again here. Now you see, you just kind of snap it like right in here. You have that clear out streak. And then there you see, see how it's able to beat that. This is just really good if they're running a lot of cover three to the left. Um, it's really good if they're starting to key in on your solo wide receiver. Um, I don't call this play a ton, maybe once or twice a game, just to kind of give a, a little bit of a mix up here. But it looks like some of the other plays that we had. And then, you know, a lot of times this is going to just get in a nice soft spot against uh, different coverages. So it's really the same thing as our Y option will set up. It's just now we're using the play, uh, the, the, uh, the route combo out of scat, which puts this guy, the motion receiver is now the threat. And then the uh, solo is now the clear out. So you see how this really spaces the field very well. And you're still able to throw this underneath the deep blues and over the top of the yellow zones. Another one of those gotcha plays in the u trips formation is the play halfback sluggo, and it's due to the fact that we have this kind of seam wheel or seam streak to the slot receiver. Um, so basically what we're wanting to do here is we're going to fade our outside trips receiver. We're going to streak our, um, our solo wide receiver. You could also put him on a corner route. I like to streak him. And then uh, we're mainly looking for this slot receiver here, right? So um, with the tight end, we do have tight end apprentice. So we could do a tight end apprentice crosser. Uh, and then what you'll see here is against your traditional cover two, this uh, seam streak is going to burn it over the top for a 
a touchdown, right? Um, so the, the main purpose of this, again, is we're just trying to get them out of the ability to just call cover two every play and put their controller down. Because cover two is, I think, the hardest defense for this formation to consistently beat if they're doing stuff like what you're seeing on your screen here and they're kind of getting adjusted with their coverages, right? So important, important play to have in your playbook. Now, another thing that we can do with this is we're going to streak our solo wide receiver and then we're going to dr uh, drag our tight end again and we're going to in route our outside trips receiver. So it looks like this. And the purpose of this is to motion this guy across. And what you'll see here is he's going to kind of fade over to the left side a little bit more, which is going to allow us to basically just manipulate cover two a lot better over there on the left-hand side. The other cool part about this specific play, again, I talked about it a little bit, but what a lot of people like to do is they like to do some kind of defense that looks like this, where they're using cover three to the solo wide receiver side. This is going to make it so that that's very difficult for them to continue to do. Because of the way that this route kind of fades to the sideline, you'll see here um, that guy, it's going to be hard for him to consistently knock that out. And you also have your tight end as a check down. So this is just primarily a play that I like to use uh, in a situation where I might face cover two. Now, another little kind of hot route mastery setup for this would be basically this right here. Um, I think this is a pretty good setup in general just because it beats man well. And again, they're not going to be able to play cover two on this because that seam streak is going to be able to basically manipulate them and get you over the top. So really nice little play setup here out of the play halfback sluggo. So for our red zone setup, we're going to be using basically uh, primarily the play stutter curl seam. You don't have to have any hot rod abilities. You don't have to have anything. Just stutter curl seam stock is really, really effective. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to hitch our uh, solo wide receiver. And then from there, we're going to flat route our outside trips receiver. We're going to in route our or we're flat running our slot, I'm sorry, in route our outside trips receiver. And then if you want to block your running back, you can. Or what you could also do is put him on an in route. Either one of those will be fine. The main read that we're looking for here is uh, this tight end crosser. As you can see, he does stop. Um, he does stop in the back of the end zone. We're going to show you how to deal with that in just a second. But that's why this play specifically is a little better, let's say, if you're on like the 10-yard line. Uh, so that you actually have some more space. But what you see is when he doesn't stop, he's going to beat man every single time. And it really leaves them with, you know, basically cover two that they're going to call. A lot of people like to call cover two, basically protect the sticks with it um, is kind of the standard, you know, way people are running this. And then the beauty of this is the hitch you have on the solo side. You'll see right here, this crosser can kind of get into... Um, into a soft spot against that cloud. Let me try to show that again. I don't know why he got bagged there, but you'll see that's more likely what's going to happen. As you can see, kind of throw it in the back corner of the end zone. Now, that's all good and well, right? But what about, like, how do I score inside the five, right? So the way that you score inside the five, unfortunately, just the way this game plays, really like there's a couple of options, but um, to run this play, you can't really use the crosser. So what you're going to do is you're going to put him on a tight end apprentice post, and you're going to smart route that, and then everything else is basically the same. This is the best way to score from uh, U-trips. And what you'll see is now he won't stop, and he'll just absolutely get open the back corner of the end zone for you pretty much every single time. So whether it's covered two, whether it's man, whether it's covered three, um, you know, this is one of my favorite. This is my favorite red zone concept. It's the uh, short side hitch with the backside smart routed post. You have to smart route the post, otherwise it will stop in the back of the end zone. Okay, super, super important to uh, smart route that post route. Now, you might be asking, as I would, okay, well, a couple things. Number one, if I'm going for two, I'm going to be in the middle of the field. I'm not going to be on a hash. And how do I do it if I don't have tight end apprentice, right? So if you don't have tight end apprentice, what you're going to do is you're going to go into your playbook here, and you're going to find a play that has a post route that you can smart route. So it could be Y option will. It could even be stack if you wanted to use that. Um, it could this patch slot out, I don't love that because it doesn't run all the way across the formation. So we're just going to use uh, tight end whip just to be safe here so we can show you a couple things. So 
if you look at this setup, this actually is pretty good for us uh, just because of where everything aligns uh, with U-trips. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit your slot receiver. You're going to motion your outside trips receiver across the formation, and you're going to smart route that post. Now, uh, in terms of the motion across receiver and what we're looking for there, what I like to do is a simple in route to the tight end. I'm going to out route this guy that I motioned, and I'm going to either wheel or uh, streak the running back. So this is what the play art kind of looks like. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look to my out route first. I see that that's manned up or whatever. And then I'm going to look at this uh, post route right over there in that corner, as you can see, gets into a nice spot. Now, I also advise that you have a slot apprentice as your solo. So if you have a slot apprentice as your solo wide receiver, then the better route is truly this slot apprentice post. Uh, but you have to smart route that slot apprentice post. But what you'll see with the slot apprentice post is he just will never stop. Um, that's what makes it a little bit better than the other route. But both routes are, are really pretty good. Now, another way that you could score uh, down here is a little bit um, – like it's a good route combo, but it's not a, I wouldn't say it's a great route combo is basically what you're going to do is you're going to flat this. Um, oh, I'm trying to, uh, the slot receiver, you're going to flat him and then you're going to po or smart route your post. So you see, it's kind of like that slant. You're going to hit your solo and then you're actually going to motion this guy in and snap it like right in. Eh, didn't get the snap right. But basically the tight end whip, the flat will pull out the flat zones and then the tight end zig will be open underneath it. But the post route that's uh, this, this specific play out of tight end whip, it has this post route that's really good. And normally you can snap it, yeah, right in here. And if you wait on this, I don't know why he's running. Why did he turn into a corner route? Practice mode is something else. Um, anyway, you could run that. I wouldn't say this is the best play in the world, but you could do, you, you would do this. You can literally just do this um, and basically say, okay, I'm mainly looking for the tight end whip. OK, those are the main ways that I would score passing the ball in the red zone. Now, if you were asking me, OK, well, how are you going to score in the red zone? Like if you had money online, what would you try to run? Really, the main thing I would be looking to do in here is I would be looking to go to single back wing slot and I would be running stretch alert bubble. OK, now what's cool about this play is you can throw this little bubble screen over here. If they're not manning him up, he's going to be wide open. It's free touchdown. If they are manning him up, then a lot of times what will happen is the run will be open where you can just kind of get a couple yards with the run. But another really underrated route combo that a lot of people don't really use, and this is a tight end apprentice combo, is tight end apprentice post. We're going to drag. We're going to uh, curl, smart route the curl, you know, and basically do this. Very good route combination. Why? Because the tight end post is going to be just like that slot apprentice post. And then you can put that outside receiver on a curl and smart route it and be pretty effective against that. Guys, I hope that you enjoyed the U-Trips ebook. I feel like uh, I've been getting a lot of requests for this. So I want to get this out to you. 